Welcome CSE 102 class. We're just going to go over some basic terms with computers, hardware, and general computer concepts. So we're just going to give a general overview so we won't spend a whole lot of time on this. So let's jump right in. What do computers do? They process data and they follow instructions that we give them. Computers are composed of hardware and software. Hardware are all the physical parts of the computer. Could be your monitor, could be your keyboard, could be the tower, and it could be the parts inside, the motherboard, the RAM, the hard drive, the optical drives. Anything that's part of, physically part of a computer is the hardware. Software can be the applications that you install. It could be the system software that's already installed and the operating system. Computers perform four basic functions in their information processing cycle. Input, processing, output, and storage. You can input data into a computer with input devices such as mice, keyboards, microphones, video cameras, scanners, touchpads. All these input devices are peripheral devices. The processing function of a computer is handled by the processor, also known as the CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit, which handles all of the instructions which are given to the computer by you primarily. The processor is a microchip located on the motherboard inside your computer and it is considered the brains of the computer. If the processor is the brains of the computer, then RAM is the short-term memory. RAM, random access memory, is temporary storage that speeds up instructions between the hard disk and the processor. It comes in 4, 8, 16, or even 32 gigabyte increments, and the more RAM you have, basically the more operations you could run on a computer, the more software you can have open at one time, and the more efficiently your operating system will function. You could never have too much RAM. It's always a good investment to get as much RAM as you can when purchasing a computer. When your data on a computer is output, it may display on a monitor, it may come out of your speakers as music or sounds, or it may show up as colors or toner from a printer. These are all output devices and they're all peripheral devices as well. Computers typically come with internal storage, some type of hard disk or hard drive where your operating system, system software, applications, and all your data is stored. Traditional hard drives like the one pictured above are typically sealed metal containers that contain spinning metal platters where bits of information are stored magnetically. These types of drives are very reliable and can hold a lot of data, but they can break down because they do have moving parts. Solid state media, which has been used in flash drives and thumb drives for some time now, is now being used in internal hard drives. They're much smaller, they're cooler, they're quieter, and since they don't have moving parts, they don't break down. And now that prices are coming down, you'll see them more as an option in laptops. Cloud storage is now very popular and very convenient. As long as you have an internet connection, you can grab your files from anywhere if they're stored in the cloud. Some examples include Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, Amazon, and iCloud. Other than the chance of not having an internet connection, the only downside of cloud storage would be maybe less security than if you stored it on your own since you are trusting your files with another company. But in the event of a fire or some kind of disaster with your computer or your backups, having files stored in the cloud would be a nice alternative. Because of their limitations of storage and also broadband internet, which we can now download software very fast, optical storage, which used to use lasers to write data onto disks, are now on their way out. In terms of storage units, the binary digit or a bit is the smallest unit composed of a 1 or a 0, which is what computers read and write. From there, 8 bits will make 1 byte, and then we start counting by bytes. And kilobytes is a 1,000 bytes, megabyte is a million bytes, a billion bytes is a gigabyte, and from there we have a terabyte, which is a trillion bytes, which we have hard drives in terabytes, and after that, probably servers and things like that may be measured in petabytes. Companies that provide internet access for you may use megabits instead of megabytes when they advertise their speeds. So if you had 40 megabits per second, you may think you can download a 40 megabyte file in a second, but you couldn't. You'd only be able to download a 5 megabyte file in one second, because remember, megabits is one eighth of a megabyte. So just keep that in mind. And that's it for our computer hardware intro.